Hi, today we are looking at section 4.3, which is stretching and compressing graphs of functions. So first thing we'll look at is stretches and compressions and reflections vertically, and then we'll look at horizontal. So if we're looking at vertical stretches, compressions, and reflections, we're really looking at functions of a form y equals a f of x, and it's our value of a in front here that is going to determine whether we have a stretch or compression and if we have a reflection. So essentially, if we have an A in front, what that will mean is it will mean that whatever our Y value was at any particular point on our graph, we multiply that Y value by A. So our new point is given by X comma A times Y. So because we're multiplying our Y value by this A in front, if our absolute value of A is greater than one, it's going to be vertically stretched by a factor of A. It also means that if A is between zero and one, when we multiply, we'll get a smaller number. So we'd have a vertical compression by a factor of A. Now, if A is less than zero, so in other words, negative, it'll be reflected in the X axis. So we have a vertical stretch or compression potentially along with a vertical reflection. Okay. so. Here's an example. There's a graph of y equals f of x, graph y equals negative one core f of x. So we could graph this without even doing a table of values, just taking points on here, multiplying the y by this. However, it can also be helpful for some to have a table of values. So I'll fill out the table of values with some values from our original function. And then we'll multiply each one by negative one quarter. So our original function was x and y equals f of x. So at negative eight, we were at eight. Negative six, we were at six. Negative four, we were at four. Negative two, we were at two. 0, we're at 2, 2, or sorry, 0, we are at 0, 2, we are at 2, 4, we were at 4, 6, we are at 6, 8, we were at 8. Okay, so there's our table of values from our original function. To graph the new function, we are just multiplying our y values by negative one quarter so therefore multiply eight by negative one quarter gives us negative two multiplying six by negative one quarter gives us negative one and a half Multiplying four by negative one chord be negative one. Multiplying two by negative one chord gives us negative 0 0.5. Zero by one quarter gives us zero. Two by negative one quarter gives us negative 0 0.5. Four times negative one quarter is negative one. Six times negative one quarter is negative 1.5. And then eight by negative one quarter is negative two. So we'll plot these, so at negative eight, We are at negative two, negative six, we're at negative one and a half, negative four, we're at negative one, negative two, we're at negative one half, zero, we're at zero, two, we're at negative half, four, we're at negative one, six, we're at negative one and a half, eight, we're at negative two. So you can see our graph ended up looking something like this. Now you can see 
that's being reflected over this axis, which we expected because we had that negative. And then this was a number between zero and one. So we expected a vertical compression, which we can see this has been compressed compared to this. Okay, next graph, given the graph of y equals g of x, graph y equals three g of x. Now this one, we don't expect a reflection because this is not negative. And because this is larger than one, we're expecting it to stretch vertically. So if we stretch something vertically, we expect to see it being a lot steeper. So we'll take the values labeled here, create a table of values with it, and then apply our transformation. So in our original graph, at negative two, we were at four, negative one, we were at one, zero, we were at zero, one, we were at one, two, we were at four. On our new graph, which is y equals three g of x, we are multiplying each of these values by three. So we'd have 12, three, zero, three, 12. So at negative two, we are at 12. That's a bit off this grid. Then at negative one, we are at three. Zero, we're at zero. One, we're at three. Two, we're at 12. So as you can see, this one's being vertically stretched. So therefore, it's a lot steeper. Okay, so next we're looking at horizontal stretches, compressions, and reflections. So you'll notice that just with like with our horizontal reflections, our value that controls everything is inside our function immediately in front of our x. Now it this b value acts a bit different from our a because our a we just multiplied our y by it. With our b, we divide our x by it. So any point that we had previously, we'll take our x value and divide it by b. As a result, if b is greater than one, we're going to have a horizontal compression of one over b. Where if b is between zero and one, we have a horizontal stretch by a factor of one over b, and if B is negative, then we're going to have a horizontal reflection. So a reflection in the Y axis. Okay, so given the graph of y equals g of x, sketch a graph of y equals g of 0.5x and y equals g of 2x, state domain and range of each. So I'll do a multiple column table of values. But I'll leave my x's all next to each other so then we can compare them with our y and graph them. So here's our original X values. Here's our original Y values. So at negative three, we were at two. Negative one, we were at five. Three, we were at three. Four, we're at negative two. Now, because we have B values, our, if this affects our points by going X over our B value. So for our first one, we've got 0 0.5 as our B value. So we'd have X divided by 0 0.5. So negative three divided by 0 0.5 gives us negative six. Negative one divided by 0 0.5 gives us negative two. Three divided by 0 0.5 gives us six. Four divided by 0 0.5 gives us eight. So at this point, I'll plot this with this. So at negative six, we are at two. At 
at negative two, we're at five. At six, we are at three. And then eight, we're at negative two. So as you can see, we had a B value that was less than one and it stretched our graph horizontally. So next we'll look at our B value of two, which is greater than one, so we expect it to compress it. This one's B value is two, so we'd have x divided by two, so negative three divided by two would be negative 1.5. Negative one divided by two would be negative 0 0.5. Three divided by two is 1.5. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So now we'll plot these. So at negative 1 and a half, we are at 2. Then at negative 0 0.5, we are at 5. Then at 1 and a half, we are at 3. And then at 2, we're at negative 2. So as you can see, that has compressed our graph horizontally. Now we'll write out our domain and range for serve these graphs. So for original, we went from an X value of negative three to positive four. So x was between negative three and four. Our range, we go from negative two to positive five. Next one, we had our y equals g of 0 0.5x. So for its domain, That goes from negative six to positive eight. So you'll notice if you divide each of these values in our domain by 0 0.5, which was our B value, you get our new domain. Now our range, because we didn't do anything vertically, no transformations vertically, it's just going to stay the same. And then for our last one, our y equals 2g of x, our domain, we went from negative 1.5 to positive 2. So once again, if we took each of these, divide them by our b value, we would get our domain here. And our range remains unchanged. Now, combining transformations, we can do both horizontal and vertical transformations at the same time. It just means instead of multiplying or dividing just our X or our Y, we are doing it to both of them. As a result, our new coordinate is given by X over B comma AY, and our new graph is written as Y equals AF of BX. Okay, so we're given the graph of y equals f of x. We want to graph y equals 4f of 0.5x. Now, looking at this, we can see we're going to have a vertical stretch as well as a horizontal stretch. So I'll start out with a table of values. So I'll put the original x, y right next to each other. Where you put them in the table of values is your personal preference, so they can go wherever you want, as long as it makes sense for you. 
So we have x and y. So we have the x intercept at negative two, so negative two we're at zero. Then at negative one we're at one, two we're at two, seven we're at three. Next, we'll have our transformations. So our transformation is given by x over b comma a y, which means our new x is given by x divided by 0 0.5, and our new y is given by 4 times y. So negative 2 divided by 0 0.5 would be negative 4. Negative 1 divided by 0 0.5 would be negative 2. 2 divided by negative 0.5 would be 4. 7 by, divided by 0 0.5 would be 14. Let's multiply our y values by 4. So it's 0 times 4 is 0. 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 4 is 12. So we'll plot these. So at negative 4, we are at 0. Negative 2, we are at 4. 4, we're at 8. And then at 14, we're at 12. So our new graph looks something like this. So we can see it's been stretched both horizontally and vertically. That's where we're looking at writing an equation for a transformed graph. So with this, what we'll want to do is pick a key point, so a local maximum or minimum. That way we can match it up on graphs. And we want to be able to find that point on both y equals f of x as well as y equals a f of bx. And then we'll use our point coordinate equation x over b comma a y to calculate a and b. Okay, so example given the graphs of y equals f of x and y equals a f of bx, find a and b and write an equation. So we have our points here. So we're one negative four and two as well as negative eight. Those correspond to each other for both a local minimum. So on our original graph, I'm just going to refer to this as the old point. On our new graph, I'll call this a new point. So we had x over b comma a y to get our new coordinates. So what this tells me is my x new is equal to the old x divided by our b value. So in this case, our new x is 1, is equal to our old x, which is 2, divided by b. Now in this case, to get b on its own, multiply both sides by b. So we have b is equal to 2. Now from this part here, we know that our new y is equal to a times our old y. So our new y was negative 4, and that's equal to a times our old y, which was negative 8. So divide both sides by negative 8. So we get 1 half is our a value. So our equation would be y is equal to 1 half f of 2x.